to switch the cold cam for an eyepiece in order in order for the first alignment so let's switch that real quick to the astroberry and um, let's see to get uh, the focus now with the button of mask so we will do that really quick focus right now so okay so our auto guiding error is still horrible but nevertheless I wanted to try this um, session real quick 30 um, 10 second exposures and yeah let's see the good thing now is you can simply go indoors and well let Astroberry do its job so Let's wait a bit. So, unfortunately, it got quite cloudy now. So, well, the only image stream is the one I got previously. And yeah, now let's disassemble all the things and check out what went on. Interesting. At least uh, the auto guiding did work in some way, even over the mount. So initially, it seems I had some other problems uh, back in the days, and uh, now I can use the direct mount control without the additional cable. So that's good at least. And yeah, let's see how the pictures went. Uh, but I think the last few already had some clouds in them. Let's find out. Okay, so as it was quite loud yesterday, let's see if this little demo session was good for anything. Alright, so I'm now at the desktop and uh, yeah, let's uh, see what uh, those uh, images look like. Uh, we'll quickly need to bring them over. So I'm saving it directly onto this uh, Astroberry USB flash drive pen drive. Now let's see if I can simply open it with the ASI fit tool. Okay. I just simply want to stack the pictures now. What was it? ASI Studio. Let's go with ASI Studio. And uh, we want to, uh, well, view them now. We want to stack them. 
And there is an update, that's great. Uh, should be rather quick. Everything's updating, <laughs> but it's good. New features and bug fixes, always nice. Um, now we're back and we wanna uh, stack the pictures real quick. So, find the correct folder again. So we're gonna be selecting all of them, I suppose, but I think we can still check them later. Uh, select the lights here. Okay, strawberry light, yeah. Uh, NGC 6960, that's it. Let's go. Let's have him working. in the latest view, most importantly, because those may have been a bit cloudy already. Okay. You can see it wobbling already. <laughs> well, well, well. Yeah, let's see what we can get out of here. Um, let's take them first and then we'll go ahead. It's the West Vale Nebula, so let's check. Caldwell 34, by the way. Yeah, so it's a rather, it's a rather slim nebula, but rather uh, long also. So now let me save this file real quick. Okay, so uh, from the result. Uh, to be honest, from that little data, uh, I'm quite happy how that turned out. Um, so uh, I didn't think <laughs> the data was uh, that useful. I mean, uh, I expected a lot of more, a lot more, um, well, blurriness or something due to the um, faulty guiding as well. But I'm happy with that. Now let's uh, to, to wrap things up. Let's go to some quick lessons learned at the end, uh, in order to improve it further. So I've taken some notes uh, for myself. Let me read them quickly for you. So, uh, things to improve for the upcoming sessions. Uh, well, first off, uh, to get a better alignment. Um, as I said, it was a bit quick and dirty because actually the sky was not that clear all the time and it was quite spontaneous uh, how it usually is uh, for <laughs> astronomy in general. Once you get clear skies, and it was also not like a um, big timeline or a big um, slot uh, for the clear sky, so that's one thing I could not control. Um, so to improve the alignment, um, uh, I did it uh, in a sh too short a way, but I knew that I just wanted to, to give it a shot. So that's one thing. Uh, also. Um, go out to more clear conditions, I think that's a no-brainer as well. Um, so what else do we have? To maybe improve the focus on my guiding scope because I did not check that either. Um, I just expected it to be the same from the last few sessions where it was okay -ish. Unfortunately I don't have a small button of mask for that one, so maybe I uh, should get one or if it's enough. I don't know, I, I need to look into that um, again. Um, so the, the guiding needs to be improved, as I said, and of course, <laughs> what, what usually counts is you need more time uh, imaging the sky. So uh, total uh, 30 times 10 seconds exposure, so 300 seconds, roughly should be 5 minutes of data, which is not that bad, I would say, but of course, uh, if I um, would, would have like, I don't know, 1-2 hours of data, um, you could squeeze even more out of that, I suppose. Then, uh, on the uh, other side, what were some points that worked well? Um, to be honest, the focusing was really, really smooth. Uh, I just um, flipped the button of mask on, had, uh, I think, Arcturus, the star, um, set uh, for the alignment. And yeah, right off the bat, uh, it managed to get a good focus. And also, 
Um, one thing in my previous videos what I mentioned is I used the SD4 link cable usually uh, for my for my um, hardware configuration, but it looks like this was a problem of my older software. In the meantime, I updated my Astroberry image, and it looks like now the Celestron uh, mount is accepting the uh, guiding commands from the camera, not via the SD4 link but uh, directly through the uh, USB communication. So that's neat. I also heard the adjustment noises from the mount during the uh, auto guarding, so that's nice. And also, um, yeah, the in-app um, feature of Ecos, the auto guarding also worked quite well, um, to be honest. And um, the um, plate solving, that, that also worked really well. So um, those are some things that would uh, well this night. So um, I think we're now at the end of this video. So thank you so much for joining me on this little, yeah, and it's not a trip, but on this little journey uh, to becoming better in the astrophotography. My name is Chris from Chris Lee's Observable Universe and stay tuned for more. By the way, if you enjoyed this content, please let me know. All right, clear skies, Chris out.